Join the people on the move. People. with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you are ready to join us in our pursuit of God, you are most welcome at Go Center on plot number 17734 Nangwenya Road. We congregate on Sundays at 8.30 and 11 hours. Gospel Outreach Fellowship, the people on the move. There is healing there. Come into his house. There is joy. Let's praise Almighty God. Lift his holy name. Come into his house to pray. Come into his house. There is healing there. Come into his house. There is joy. Let's praise Almighty God. Lift His holy name. Come into His heart. I want to greet all of you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I want you to give a very, very special welcome to those people who are going to join us on television. Why don't you just give them a very, very good welcome? Today we want to talk about building through sacrifice. For the last two weeks I've been talking about building community and I'm continuing talking about this subject. And one of the points was sacrifice. Now, I've realized I couldn't say much about that and I need to talk much more about it. Some people may misunderstand the word sacrifice. You know, sacrifice, we understand it as people who are well-versed in the Bible, that in the Old Testament, people were sacrificing animals. And uh, time and again, we read about the sacrifice of thanksgiving, the sacrifice of, for sin, and so on. But uh, in the New Testament, we read about sacrifice as well. And it may not always mean that uh, somebody has to die, but sacrifice always means the act of surrendering something. The act of surrendering something. And so we want to explore a little bit further what sacrifice has to do with building community and how through sacrifice we see the building of the community go forward. So let's turn to the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. And the Bible reads here, Come to the Lord, the living stone, rejected by people as worthless, but chosen by God as valuable. I'm reading from the Good News translation. Verse 5, come as living stones and let yourselves be used in building the spiritual temple, where you will serve as holy priests to offer spiritual and acceptable sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. For the scripture says, I chose a valuable stone which I am placing as the cornerstone in Zion and whoever believes in him will never be disappointed. Praise God. And let me just read uh, from the second book of Peter. Uh, and here I read from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 and verse 3. And the Bible reads here, May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. I want to emphasize, as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Now let me also take you to the book of Hebrews, not very far from Peter. 
Hebrews, and I'm going to read from chapter 13, verse 14. The Bible says, this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. And don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. Let us pray. Lord, we are so thankful that today we can be in your presence, that we can have a chance to give you praise and worship and adoration. And Lord, that we have this opportunity right now to listen to your word. Thank you, Lord, for that which you have spoken in our midst. And I pray, Lord, that you anoint my lips, Lord, to speak your word as I'm going to deliberate on the words you have put in my heart. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your guidance and for your wonderful power which fill your words. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The scriptures we have been reading are indeed very, very powerful and significant, and I want to go a little bit into these different scriptures I've been reading, and some of them I'm going to, to still read. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14 says, this world is not our permanent home. Some people seem not to understand that this is a reality. You know, there are people who are living just for this world. They are doing whatever they can to build themselves a nice existence, you know, uh, have all the, the goodies around which they look for. And, uh, you know, as if there is nothing else in this world but just what you can see and what you can touch with your hands. Let us understand, whatever we do in this world, for the sake of material things, this world is not our permanent home. And everything which we see, everything we touch, is going to be gone sooner or later. And that's why it is so important for all of us to understand that we are not just building for this world which is visible, but that we are building for a world to come. The plan of God, as we have been reading, is that God is building his church, a marvelous body, a marvelous house, the temple of the living God, as it is called in the scriptures at several uh, different scriptures. And you know, a temple is a place where God has chosen to dwell, a place which God is ready to occupy. And so all of us, we are called to be living stones in the temple of the living God. So in other words, God wants to indwell us. God says that we are living stones. Praise God. Stones, not stones which you are uh, kicking around with your feet, but living stones which God has taken from the, from the quarry of this world and is dressing is making it making them beautiful and putting them together to make one beautiful house where God dwells you know when we receive Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord then God dwells in us the Holy Spirit wants to dwell in all of us and please my understand that God is not interested in us having a label or having a religion, but he wants to have room inside our lives. You know, that's what a temple is all about, where God can manifest and where God can live in our midst. So we thank God for the opportunity to be people who know Jesus Christ. And I hope you are one of the people who knows Jesus Christ. If you don't, you need to know him because you can't be the house of God. You can't be a dwelling place for God if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life. So all of us are called not only to be living stones, but also be a workforce to build the temple of the living God. You know, let me repeat this uh, verse in First Peter 
The Bible says, come to the Lord, the living stone rejected by people as worthless, but chosen by God as valuable. Come as living stone. So the first stone, the cornerstone, is Jesus. But then we, all of us who have received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, are called to be living stones who are going to be joined together to make one big building, the body of Christ, Jesus our Lord. Church is not just going to a house like this one on a Sunday, but church means we are involved in building something which has eternity value, something which is going to be there when everything else has gone. God is calling all of us to be living stones, but also to be priests. And a priest is a mediator. A priest is mediating between the living God on one hand and the world on the other hand. And so all of us are called to bring others to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and make them part of that wonderful temple of the living God. So God has called us to build a unique community, not a club, not a, a group of people with a certain interest, but a unique community which is going to last forever and ever. Praise God. You can see that so many uh, groups are coming together for a season and then after some time they disband. You can see sometimes uh, new, new uh, you know, companies are coming on the horizon and then all of a sudden they disappear. Uh, just when I came here, I bought a newspaper and the headline says, Ba, 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 gone, under. You know, big company, which many of you will already have noticed. Come with a big bang, gone silently, all of a sudden, you know, and uh, you realize something is wrong. But that's how the world is. This world is not our permanent home, and a lot of things you see are not permanent at all. You know, sometimes you, you, you uh, grow to laugh a certain thing, and all of a sudden, it's no longer there. It's gone. But one thing I can assure you, that our kingdom is growing. His government, our Lord's government, has no end. Praise God. He is busy building his temple, the temple of the living God, which is going to be there forever and ever and ever and ever. Praise God. And wonderfully, has he called you and me to be part of that wonderful building. We are called to be living stones. We are called to make that building unique. Every one of us is called to be part of that building. Now, the foundation of the building called the house of God or the temple of God is the sacrifice of Jesus. Let us not forget, sacrifice is what builds things. I mean, those of you who are building a house for yourself, which is a good thing, you know that you can't build a house for yourself or uh, go into a big project uh, without sacrifice. You cannot expect that you build a house, at least most of us, with, uh, with excess cash. You know, we all have to plan very carefully. There may be some people in the world who, was, who were able to build something, whichever they wished, with uh, uh, overflowing liquidity until recently because a lot of this money was wiped away. But right now, we must understand we are not part of those groups who have got that much money when we want to build something, we have to sacrifice. Amen? Anybody with me here? You know, is anybody building something? When you build a house or when you build something for yourself, you will always have to very carefully plan. You will have to look at your budgets not one time or two times or three times, but 10 times and 20 times and 30 times because you need to know, you know, how will I make this work? How will I get through this? Everything will be squeezed, everything will be stretched, and it requires sacrifice. If you are not prepared to sacrifice on the uh, luxuries of life, 
you will not be able to build yourself anything. Am I right? Those of you who have built something, am I right? For sure. Those of you who have never built something, you may not know what I'm talking about. Maybe you are still living on luxuries when you are supposed to build on sacrifice. When Jesus decided together with the Father and the Holy Spirit that there would be a body in this world which would be called the body of Christ, which would be the church of Jesus Christ, which would be there for eternities to come. There was a call on sacrifice. And the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he was prepared to do what? To sacrifice. He sacrificed his own son. Now, some of you may say, well, he knew that he would come back. Well, <laughs> is that the consolation? You know, you've been uh, together with somebody and now you let him go. You let him go into a hostile environment, into a hostile world. Let me tell you, it was a sacrifice for the father to let his son go. It was a sacrifice for Jesus to decide to go into the world. Now, you and I, we have not been in heaven, so we don't know what Jesus sacrificed. We have no clue. One day we'll be there and we'll have a look what Jesus gave up for the sake of building a church. But let me tell you, it was much, much, much more than we can all imagine. The glory which Jesus left behind is something which we cannot describe because we don't fully understand it. We don't know it. And then the Bible tells us not only did Jesus leave glory in heaven, but he took off his divine garment or his divinity and he became a human being just like you and me. So in other words, Jesus sacrificed. He sacrificed much more than we can imagine because we just don't know the other world in which once we, were, we are going to live. But a fact is, that Jesus was prepared to lay down his life. When he came to live in this world, in this hostile world, to give himself as a ransom, as a sacrifice, as the Lamb of God, slaughtered without fault, he gave up the ultimate. And we need to realize that God gave us the very best he had. So God glorified, I mean, sacrificed the glory in heaven. He sacrificed the intimacy with his heavenly father. Even so, he was still talking to his father while he was here on earth. When he went on the cross, he even sacrificed that intimacy which he had with him up to that point in time. And that's why the cry of Jesus was not so much for any other pain which he was experiencing, but he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The worst thing for Jesus was to be separated from his father. What a sacrifice. But Jesus gave up his life twice. He gave, us his life, he gave up his life in heaven, in glory, where he had everything where everything was perfect and wonderful in order to exchange it for a life here on earth. And we all know that Jesus was nailed to the cross of Calvary for our sake. And he gave up his right to live at the very tender age of 33 and a half years or something like that. But let me tell you, even the third time, that means now, Jesus is still sacrificing for us. The Bible tells us that he is interceding for us. You know, he could, he could celebrate with his father, he could celebrate with the angels in heaven, he could do whatever he wanted to do, but instead his focus is on you and me. 
His focus is on standing in the gap on our behalf. He is in the seating for all of us. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? So remember, Jesus gave himself up three times. The first time when he left heaven, he exchanged glory for a, for a world full of sin. He lived a life of a human being, just like you and me, but without sin. And he was not supposed to die. The devil had no right in him. But he gave himself up once again, even here on earth, by dying at the cross of Calvary. Praise God, because Jesus was a righteous man, without sin, and the devil had no hold on him, he couldn't remain in the kingdom of darkness. He had to come out. And praise God, those of you who belong to Jesus Christ, those of us who walk with Jesus Christ, the devil will not find anything on us, not because of our own sake, but because of what Jesus has done for us. So he has to release us. He has to let us go. And so Jesus went back to his heavenly Father and again for the third time. And that is up to now. Jesus is still sacrificing, still standing in the gap for all of us, praying for us, interceding for us, pleading with his Father, let this man have another chance. Let this lady still go another round. Just imagine. A very important point which I want you to understand is that God gave us gifts to enable us to build, to build his kingdom, to build his living temple. When you look at yourself, you have received so much from God. You have received gifts and talents and abilities. And many people think, this is mine. I can do with it whatever I want. Let me tell you, you are wrong. The gifts and the talents and the abilities God has given to you, they are not yours for you to use them as you wish. They are given to you for you to invest them in the kingdom of God. Are you with me? If you go into the Old Testament, and I don't, I'm not going to read the scriptures right now, but I want to just remind you, if you go into the Old Testament in the time of Moses, uh, God told Moses, listen, I have people in your midst whom I have very uniquely equipped to prepare the tabernacle of God in a powerful and wonderful way. In fact, the Bible tells us that God has given wisdom, special wisdom to certain people in order to prepare all the wonderful furnitures and all the wonderful things which were, uh, you know, characteristic of the tabernacle of Moses. These people were equipped. They were there. God knew them. All right? They were in the community, and everybody had a part to play in order to build the tabernacle of the Lord. Not everybody had the same gifting, not everybody had the same ability, but all together were contributing in order to build the tabernacle of the Lord. And the same is true for us who are called to build the body of Christ, the community of God, the house of the Lord, or whatever you may call it. You know, the temple of the living God. We are living stones. All of us, we are contributing ourselves. And as uh, we have been reading in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, come as living stones, number one. But then it says also, let yourselves be used in building that spiritual temple. So you have to bring yourself, and then you have to be ready to invest what God has given to you. Because that's how the building is going to grow from one level to another level to another level until it is finished. There are many people who think the gifts and the talents they have received from God, they are just their own. Let me remind you, there were some people who were uniquely gifted 
in our world, you know, and I'm just trying to maybe just when, mention one name. Those of you who are on, in my age, you know, you will definitely have heard of Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley is called the king of rock and rolls, even up to now. Okay, he was one of the singers which had such a strong impact, especially amongst the youth of his time. But this man was beginning using his gifts in the church, singing Rock of Ages, not being the king of rock and rules, you know, but singing to the Lord. He had been uniquely gifted. And even up to now, you can buy albums from Elvis Presley, which are gospel albums. He sings gospel music because he grew up in the church. But unfortunately, he didn't stay there. There came a time, and I'm not here to judge anybody. I don't know how he ended his life. I don't know how his relationship with God is. But unfortunately, he began to use the gift, the talent, the ability God had given to him not for the sake of the kingdom of God, not to build the kingdom of God, but to build rock and roll, which has done a lot of damage in people's lives, which was beginning of the drug culture, you know, which is very, very clearly documented. How sad. Listen, if you have received the gift, you shouldn't say, okay, church is my stepping stone. You know, at least here I can sing and people can listen to me. And if I'm very good, you know, then I will go on my own. Listen, there's no on your own. You have been receiving a gift from God, whatever that gift of God is, in order to build the temple of the Lord. God has given you wisdom, has given you ability, has given you strength, not for yourself but for the body of Christ. And the good thing is, if you use it for the body of Christ, for the kingdom of God, if you seek first the kingdom of God, then God will take care of everything else in your life. Then the gifts which you have, they will also benefit you in the end. But you must decide to be ready to invest whatever God has given to you into the house of God. And I want to tell you, some of you are very successful. Some of you have made it in life, as we say. But the kingdom of God is none of your concern. Not only is it not in the first place, it is on no place whatsoever. You are only hoping to find a place, a chair where you can sit on a Sunday to come to church. And that's very shameful. Because let me tell you, whatever you are building on earth, as nice and as beautiful and as wonderful as it may be, it will be gone. This world is not a permanent home for any one of us. So what do you do with what God has given to you? God has given us wonderful gifts to enable us to build the body of Christ. What you got is for the benefit of an eternal portfolio. You know, you have heard the word portfolio. You know, these are the, the investors at Wall Street who are talking, my portfolio, I've got my money here, my money there, my money somewhere, you know. Uh, in the financial centers of this world, the greatest of all them is Wall Street, and we have heard what happened to Wall Street. A lot of people who had, you know, put money together for their whole life, they have lost either everything or huge amounts of money. And today there is a lot of crying and shaking in many homes because they have built only for this world and not for the eternal world of our God. Jesus said, when you gather, you know, nice things and good things, make sure that you store it somewhere where the moths and the rust will not eat them, you know, where it is safe. And some of us, we are not heeding that advice. Are you with me? Some of us, we are not heeding that advice. We are, we are putting our values in places where the devil can come and steal them. I 
I've heard an interview with somebody, or, or read, I think I read, I read it in, in, uh, in a publication, and uh, this man was uh, a Christian, and he said, you know, I've lost millions, but I, 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 don't, I don't be surprised, you know, because I expect this to happen, but what I have invested in the heavenly kingdom, nobody can steal it. I love that. I love that. Don't worry for this man, because he's still rich, you know, he still has a lot. But he says, what I've invested in God's kingdom, nobody can take it. What have you invested in God's kingdom? How much is in a safe place? Let me tell you, when we built and sacrificed for the sake of the kingdom of God and the, the, the house of the Lord, this is something which will be there forever and ever. I've told you that God has given you gifts in order to achieve something, not for yourself alone, but for the body of Christ. Okay? Many of us, we are misusing God's gifts. If God has given you the ability to create wealth, and he has given to many of us, maybe to all of us, what are you doing with that ability? You create wealth for yourself, and then you know that the devil is pinching it again. Use the gifts wisely. But then, you see, there's another very important step, which is important in the sense that you will not build anything until and unless you decide to invest as a matter of choice. You see, Jesus came into this world not because anybody forced him. The Bible doesn't say that the Father forced him, you know, I want you to go to, to earth and redeem the people. No, they agreed. All right? And all of them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all of them sacrificed. All of them were ready to let go of certain privileges which they enjoyed before that. For your sake and for my sake. And the same is true in our own lives. You know, God has given you talents and abilities, but then you have to choose whether you are ready to sacrifice or whether you are hanging on, clinging on to what you have received yourself. Any community will only be built by sacrifice. Any community will only be built by sacrifice. Every house which is built by ordinary people like us will be built because somebody is prepared to take a substantial amount of his earnings or of his hard work and put it forward for something to build for his family and for the children he's growing up with. There's no quick fix here, all right? Things don't just happen like that. Those people who are building houses of the overflow of their wealth, usually they don't, they don't really uh, have so much enjoyment out of it. You know, if you have sweated for something, if you have sacrificed for something, you will surely treasure it. You know, it's very easy to see when you have somebody who drives his own car and somebody who drives somebody else's car. Have you noticed that? You know, if you drive your own car, you will make sure that car is taken care of. But I've seen people who drive other people's car, you know. It's a shame. Why? Because it's not theirs, you know. If they get kicked out today, tomorrow they will find another job somewhere else, you know. They can bash another person's car. But if it is your car, you will be very, very careful. You know, you will, you will think twice whether you will overtake in a dangerous spot. You have heard people have lost their lives because 
some minibus driver decided to overtake three cars or three trucks, I don't know, in one row, just to get ahead. When he saw another car coming, he couldn't make it. Why? Because he's careless. He doesn't care. If it's bashed, it's not his car. You understand? If he was the owner of that bus, I don't think he would have done what he did. That's the problem we have. What is your ownership level for the church? Are you feeling you are part of the church or you are just a visitor of the church? If, if you are just a visitor, you won't put anything in. And I, I'm t I tell you, there are so many visitors in different churches. Some of them, they are here today, tomorrow they are there, tomorrow they are somewhere else. But if you are an owner, you will put something in and you will stick with the church. You know, because you say, this is the church I have invested in. You will not easily jump from one tree to another. Let me use another example. An example of nations. You know, nation building is not an easy thing. Nation building only comes through sacrifice. I've read extensively when I was young about the, the, uh, the people who built the United States of America. And of course, they made a lot of mistakes. But one thing you can learn from them is that they were sacrificing. Sometimes everything they had, many of them even their own lives, in order to build a society where everybody can live in freedom. Many of these people had left their homes in Europe and in different places in the world because they were persecuted there for their faith. They were not having the freedom they were looking for. And so they went to the United States of America. At that time, of course, it was not the United States of America. But they began to build with sweat and hard work a new nation, which today is the superpower number one in the world. Of late, you have seen the United States is in trouble. It's coming down again, you know? Why? Because there are so many people who don't want to sacrifice any longer. They're always keeping their hands up and say, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And I tell you, if there is nobody who builds continuously, eventually things will fall back down again. Are you with me? What I'm telling you are secrets, you know, so better keep them nicely. And you can apply them on your own lives. Now, there are benefits which the people of the United States of America have because there were generations of people who sacrificed for the sake of that nation. But if things continue as they are and people are not continuing to sacrifice, but just demand things for themselves, you will see sooner or later, this nation will no longer be what it has been over many years. Another example, Japan. You know, Japan is the second largest economy in the world after the United States. How did it get there? You know, Japan was destroyed after the war, the, the war, the Second World War. But what happened is that people were working without demands, almost day and night, in order to rebuild their country. Nation building doesn't come by chance, by accident. It comes when people sacrifice. Are you with me? As much as a nation is being built through sacrifice, the kingdom of God is equally built by sacrifice. I could use the example of my, my home country, Germany, which was equally destroyed after the war, after the Second World War. But people were sacrificing everything in order to rebuild the country. But today, a different generation is there who is just demanding. And I'm telling you, these countries are right now going down. The Western world is in big trouble because there are generations who have forgotten about how to sacrifice. They just demand everything for themselves. And how do we apply this to our own nation? 
You know, I want to tell you, I believe in Zambia. I believe in Zambia. Why? Because God has given me a calling for Zambia. And how can you see that it's true that I believe in Zambia? Because you see me building. Okay? I've built into mm. Zambia. I believe in Zambia. I believe Zambia has a great future. And everybody who believes in a nation will invest into that nation. There are some people who are nationals of this nation, but they are taking their money out, you know. Now, in the light of what happened recently, it's not a good idea to take your money out, you know, because I think it's much safer in Zambia than in Wall Street. Okay, the British pound has lost tremendous value. If you had British pound, poor you. You were better off with kwacha. You know, sometimes we are looking down on ourselves, but this is our nation. And I say ours because I feel very much at home here. Amen. I believe in Zambia, and that's why I invest in Zambia. If you, if you believe in Zambia, don't try to find the first loophole to go to America. Hey, you, are, you are going to join a, a nation which is on the way down. But Zambia is on the way up. I believe that with all of my heart. Amen. Amen. Yes, we have challenges, you know, we are seeing the culture doing one thing and the other, but you know, value which you create in Zambia has value. I'm telling you. And please don't just keep money floating around, invest it wisely. First of all, begin with the house of God and then the rest invest it wisely. You know, don't, don't try to take it out. Take it where? Can you tell me a safe place where money is safe these days? Hello? You have been watching your television and it went blank. Huh? It went blank because somebody closed the, down the station, you know? You think I'm taking my money to the UK, to the US? Hey, it is much safer right here. Don't rush anywhere. Eh? Don't, don't, be, don't be in trouble with your, with your, with your hard-earned money. Make sure that you invest it, number one, in the kingdom of God. Let the kingdom of God be first. And then the rest, God lets you enjoy it. You know, God lets you enjoy it greatly. And uh, you will see that God will bless you over and over and more and more in that. You see, the Bible tells us that you don't have to be af afraid of tough situation, situations in life. In fact, those of us who know Jesus, we are very safe even in the drought. Let me just give you one or two verses. Psalm chapter 1, very easy to remember. Has anybody never read uh, Psalm 1? I hope you all have, but if you never have, please. You should read it, especially during this so-called financial crisis. Okay? The Bible says, Oh, the choice of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand with sinners, or join in with scoffers, but they delight in doing everything the Lord wants. Day and night they think about his law. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season without fail. Their leaves never wither. In all they do, they prosper. You know, in every season, even in the dry season, when you are planted on the river bank, you will never worry whether rain is there or not there because you have got your source. Amen? And I think it is so important that we are understanding that our source is not drying up. The world markets, economic markets, financial markets may dry up. Companies may close down, but our source is not drying up. In fact, we will still bear fruit. And you know, in fact, God in his, in his wisdom, and sometimes with a lot of humor, uh, is making his people who are considered the outcasts of the world, sometimes he makes them flourish right then and there, most 
You know, when everybody else is going down, we are going up. Hallelujah. Sacrifice is a choice. Nobody forces you to sacrifice. Nobody give, uh, forces you to give up something for the sake of the Lord and his kingdom. Nobody. Of course, the opposite is true as well. If there is a family where everybody is just demanding, that family will be on the rocks very soon. If there is a nation where everybody just wants and pulls things out, that nation is going to fall. And there are many examples around the world today, you know, where people are just trying to squeeze. And that's why, you know, we must get rid of corruption because these are people who just want to benefit only for one person, themselves. You know, and that is a cancer which needs to be destroyed. It is a cancer which needs to be fought by all means because that is trying to destroy a nation. You know, we must stop that. Instead, we must invest into our nation. We must be proud of our nation. And what is true for our nation is true much more even for the kingdom of God. Amen? You know, I'm surprised that some people, they will always come and say, God, bless me, bless me, bless me. You know, they always want something from the Lord, but when God says, give your full tithe into my, home, into my house, then they are nowhere to be seen, you know. <laughs> you know, how can you think you will just be given all the time, God will give you, give you, give you, when you are unfaithful? Let me tell you, God is not foolish. God is wise. You can turn your head upside down. You know, you can stand on your head and walk around, shake your feet. And say, God, please do something for me. If, if you are not faithful with the little he has given you, he will not add more. That's biblical. The Bible says, if you are faithful with the little I have already given you, I will put you over much. So are you seeing yourself growing or are you still at the same, at the same level? And you're saying, you know, I've been praying for the last 20 years. God bless me, God bless me. But I don't see anything. Well, it's your own fault. Become faithful with the little God has given you, and you will see he will put you over much. All right? The righteous are built or planted right next to the riverbank. And it doesn't matter what weather is going to come, whether it's, it's, uh, it's a rainy season or whether it's dry season, we know that we are not depending on the circumstances around us, we are depending on the almighty God. Hallelujah. God is calling us to be involved. Remember what you received as a gift, as a talent, you received it so that you invest it in the, into God's kingdom. It's your choice, Nobody will force you. The pastor will not force you. He will just remind you time and again, you know, because uh, I've got your benefit at heart. And look at some of these nations where generations of people have been sacrificing. They are, they are really blessed. But if they are continuing the way they are, just trying to demand, then the blessings will disappear. So if you want to see your life being blessed, your family being blessed, Remember that you have a calling to build the community of God. The community which will last forever and ever and ever. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 says, This is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. You see, God has given you gifts. It may not have been Paul who prayed for you. Maybe somebody else prayed for you, or I prayed for you, or somebody else. doesn't matter. But God has given you spiritual gifts. And the, the Apostle Paul says, you know, that gift, it can be dormant in your life. But you can also make sure that it is actually doing for what it was given. Fun into flames, the spiritual gift God gave you. What does that mean? You know, all of us, we feel the wind in the air, isn't it? 
That wind in the air is there whether you harness it or not. All right? All you need to do is put up a windmill and you will see the, the wheel of the windmill is beginning to turn and then you can either put water from out of the ground or you can do something else with it. Uh, it can do something by harnessing the power which is in the atmosphere. And in a similar way, you know, God has given us power, but we need to harness it. We need to use it. We need to utilize it. Kafue River is flowing from its... Uh, very con from its uh, origin down up it, uh, until it enters into some busy river and it's a very powerful force but only in Kafue Gosh is that water being used and only a little bit of that water in order to create power for Lusaka and for a lot of other places are you with me have you been there should go there it's very interesting you know there is power unimaginable power in that huge river and much more even in Sambesi and in many other uh, uh, rivers and so on which are around our country. We are very blessed. In fact, we, have, we are the country of, 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 of the highest number of water resources in the whole of Africa. We are rich. Hey, we are rich, extremely rich. Why would you believe in, in any other country and not Zambia? You know? Some countries, they don't have anything in the ground except dirt. But we have got so many good things in the ground. God has uh, hidden so many good things. Some of them we have not even discovered yet. Praise God. Power is there. But you know, power is not to destroy, but to build. It's very unfortunate that there are so many people who are going to war in order to destroy things. But God has not given us power to destroy, but has given us power to build. Amen? God has not given us power to shout on top of our voices all the time, but God has given us power to encourage. You know, there are some Pentecostals who under, misunderstand power. They always shout, power, power, power! <laughs> Every latest gimmick in the book is being used to show how powerful eh? let me see your power in what you built please not in how you are using the latest gimmick on the on the pulpit power is meant for building how much power have you got yes I am me I've got power let me see it okay what are you doing with it? Because people who are just parading their power and never use it, they have got no power whatsoever. These are the weakest. It's just like a big balloon, you know? <laughs> it looks big, you know, blown up. But it just takes, takes a little bit of a needle. Chip! Bah! And the power is gone. So, power is given for a purpose. And the purpose is that we achieve something with it, that we build community with it. Praise God for every one of you. I love to see you. You are so beautifully looking. Okay? I see some smiles. Okay, some people are wondering, what is this man up to? <laughs> but most of you are really smiling. I like you. Okay? But you know, the resources and the sources in your life, they are so big. So many times we're saying, God help me, God help me. But God has said, I've given you resources. I've given you abilities. Use what I've given you. And you know, when you move in the power of God, God will give you as you move. God said to Moses, you know, I want you to build the tabernacle, but don't worry. It's not difficult because already in your group, in your, amongst your people, there are the right people who have got everything they need in order to get the job done. Isn't that powerful? And that was, that's given me great, great confidence because I know within this congregation here, there's everything I need. 
everything God needs to build this in a vibrant and powerful church, much more beyond what we see today. Amen? But not only do you need to discover your gifts and your talents, you need to fund them into flame and you need to prepare, be prepared to sacrifice what God has given to you for the Lord. Come into his eyes, there is healing there. Come into his eyes, there is joy. Let's praise our mighty God, lift his holy name. Come into his eyes to pray. Come into his eyes, there is healing.